Hey folks, it's E. Chip and Robber. It's a cold fall day uh, in the central U.S. and we are at what I guess we'll call from here on out location two or something like that or <laughs> or our country location. We have a surprise for you. Now, <laughs> we, we've been hinting to some of you who've made comments on our videos in the past that we have another huge project coming up. Uh, we you've just about finished with the solar generator and are gonna bring it out here in fact and park it uh, with a couple solar panels uh, attached uh, for the winter so it'll maintain the batteries and and uh, keep it going nicely keep it in good shape uh, ready for next year out of contentment when we need it but uh, in the meantime as we sort of bring that project to a close we have another huge project <clears throat> Uh, bigger than the solar generator and I mean physically bigger and a bigger challenge I think <laughs> it is going to be an adventure deluxe we're still not sure if this is going to be a a go but we're going to see we're going to see so what do you have to say Robert um, well, I'm really excited about it and <laughs> I get to do more things, more new things that I haven't done before and I get to work on them and I get to work on equipment. I get to have, I get to be a grease monkey. <laughs> That's it. A grease monkey. I am. I get to be a grease monkey this time. You're going to be a rust monkey too. <laughs> you know, Here's the thing about us. I think we've said it in videos before. We either go big or go home. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, we, we like challenges. We like new challenges. And, you know, we're not afraid of big challenges. Um, we hope this is not one that we've taken on that's just too big. And, and in fact, uh, if we find out early on that it's just going to be too much to do, we're going to scrap the project. But one of the things that we need to do is we need to be able to clear our land to start building out at Contentment. And we're hoping to do that uh, next summer, in summer of 2019. So uh, we've got to prepare for it. The other thing that you know many of our viewers know is that we're trying to do this debt free. And so uh, you know that, that's our goal, to do as much of it ourselves and to build Contentment debt free. So, you know, that involves um, a lot of, for us anyway, a lot of preparation work that we have to do ourselves that we just can't hire someone for. And so, I mean, sometimes it means that we have to do a whole lot of um, extra, extra. extra work. <laughs> yeah, for sure. More projects to get, we have a lot more prep work and a lot more projects mm -hmm. to get to the goal of building contentment. Oh, that's a good way to put it. And so, <laughs> oh man, I hope we, we have, <laughs> I hope we have not bit off more than we can chew here. I mean, I have worked on, you know, mechanical things on and off, you know, all my life. I'm not afraid of them. Um, I enjoy the work and, and stuff like that, but we're going to turn around <laughs> here and show you our next big challenge and uh you know you all can either deride us for it or or you can or you can uh you can congratulate us i don't know if you should be but uh we've got to step away from it far enough because it's so big so that you can see what we've got here but as we said we need to be able to clear land uh out of contentment we need to be able to dig hole for a septic do trenching uh, all of that kind of stuff. So we need a piece of equipment that, or more than one, that'll do it. And here it, here we think it might be. Yay! So. <laughs> there it is. Oh. Uh, I don't know if we, I don't know if you can, I mean, if we're in it or let me see. <laughs> Stay right there, Robert. Let me see where we're at. Ta-da! Oh, yeah, we can get closer. We can get closer. <laughs> careful, careful. <laughs> okay. This is a 19 early 1960s we know it's pre-1964 but we're not sure what year uh dinaho backhoe and i think we're going to nickname it dina for dinosaur <laughs> <laughs> because oh does it need some work i mean as you can see it's just covered in rust i mean just about all the rust is cosmetic it's not a big deal it's just a little you know sanding paint sandblasting whatever but uh the Dynaho, this is one of the first backhoes 
ever made. And when I say ever made, it was the first one, I think it was the first one that was ever designed as a backhoe from the ground up. So it, it has some sort of historical value in a way to those who follow equipment. But um, more than that, these things are known uh, as serious earth movers, dynahoes are, because they're large machines, heavy machines, and they, uh, they exhibit a lot of power. This is nothing like a Kubota, you know, with a, um, with a little loader bucket on the front and a backhoe attachment on the back. This thing is serious. That right there will hold a third of a yard. This loader in front will hold about a yard and a half of earth. And so it's a serious machine, or at least it was in the day. But um, as you can see, it needs a lot of help. Um, it's powered by an old flathead Continental engine, uh, you know, late 50s, early 60s era, six cylinder engine, 244 cubic inches, about four liter engine. Um, <clears throat> and uh, it's, got, it's got power steering, it's got power brakes, and uh, it's got an automatic transmission and air conditioning. So. <laughs> what do you think, Robert? Um, I think it's going to be a great project. Um, I'm going to get to learn more new skills and do new things. And I'm already wanting to like get in there and get all the dirt out of it and stuff because it's bothering me. But I want to be able to use like a that little cuppy sander thing and get all the rust off. That's what I really want. Oh, a do. little cut brush on the grinder yes. or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Some we tells had, me we're going to need more than that. I wish I had a ginormous <laughs> sandblasting pit thing so yeah. I could just and make it. Well, get it off. actually, it may be something we might want to build temporarily <laughs> to put some of these larger pieces into and sandblast them because you can see this uh, we don't know much about the history of this thing except that it was originally sold by butler sparks equipment in oklahoma city oklahoma i guess and um, we know that it was a it belonged to uh, the county or state or something like that they used it for many years but it obviously has fallen into disrepair has just been left um, from what I understand uh, from the fellow we bought it from he bought it he was gonna fix it up but then he got sick and or you know wasn't feeling well and can't do it <clears throat> and he bought it from a diesel mechanic who had a heart attack and couldn't continue the work he started on it so hopefully that trend <laughs> does not continue to us but um I, I guess my guess is it was parked under a tree somewhere because for many years because I don't know if you can tell or not those are lichens growing on this thing there, and oh, yeah so go ahead no there are pecan shells in it yeah <laughs> uh, we found pecan holes resting on top of the engine so we're thinking it was sitting under a you know a pecan tree or something for a long long time and um, but uh, so you know the first things first we're going to try and get this engine to turn over. Not to start, just to make sure it'll turn over and that it's not locked up somehow. This is the first time <laughs> that we're trying to work on this beast. Yeah. What, have, what have you put in it? Well, so far, what I've done is if you look down here, I've, these spark plugs are kind of wet. That's because they're rusting literally onto the frame. I don't know how long they've been in there, but I took a 50-50 a mixture of acetone and Marvel Mystery Oil to create a sort of penetrating oil, uh, hopefully to loosen those so I can get those spark plugs out of there without too much trouble, hopefully without breaking them. And then I'm gonna squirt some more of that 50-50 mixture down inside the uh, cylinders of the engine, let it sit for a while, do its penetrating oil action thing, uh, so that uh, we'll try to turn this engine over tomorrow and see what happens with it. I say it's the magic mystery tour. The Marvel Mystery Tour or something. It's dying to take our money away. Oh, and that loosened nicely. I mean, it's tight, but penetrating oil certainly helped. Okay, so that, that's a plug from the number one cylinder. I mean, it's obviously rusted, but the, uh, you know, it's this nice, it's very encouraging that this tip is not covered in, you know, uh, black burned oil residue that's a good sign 
means that the cylinder is not burning oil. So I'm gonna take some of this concoction I made, put a whole bunch of it down in the cylinder. All right, so we're going to try to turn this over by jumping the starter solenoid. Just going to use a screwdriver. What we do is we take the screwdriver, touch it to the lead that comes from the battery or the power source, and touch it to, I think it's this uh, little pin terminal here that sort of bypasses the starter solenoid and runs the juice to the lead that heads down to the starter. So let's try it. Ah. And it's turning. It's a good sign. We got an engine that'll turn over. So good. Don't want to turn it over too much because there's no oil pressure building in this and I don't want to scar anything up inside the engine for lack of oil. I did pour some of that 50-50 penetrating oil down into the cylinders to help loosen things up and lubricate as little as I could, the little bit that I could, but just want to make sure that we're not trying to, uh, that we're not destroying the engine here because we're obviously not building up enough oil pressure, so. Good news. That's good news. Now the only other thing we've got to do is find out about the transmission oh. here. This, oh, careful, man. The, uh, stick shift is stuck because it's been sitting for so long. This thing's been sitting for a long, long time and it's literally stuck. I mean, we've got been throwing some penetrating oil down in there to get it to loosen up some, but uh, and it's getting more and more loose, but it hasn't quite loosened up yet. We got this dust cap on here when we We've been throwing penetrating oil on it. It's loose, but every time we tap on it, a whole bunch of crud uh, comes up out of this thing. So I, I think it's obvious we're going to have to pull the top of this uh, um, range gearbox or transmission off and uh, maybe clean things out to, you know, get the forks working freely and the stick working freely, stuff like that. But we're going to go through... We're, we're definitely going to go through we should have just got buckets the, big, of, big the gallon bucket. of penetrating oil for this project but yeah pump it in there it just goes right down in that hole motor ran folks don't know how long it's been sitting i mean at least 10 years and it just started okay let's do it again
that's okay. I'm so excited! <laughs> <laughs> and it went, woo! And it kept going for a minute. Woo! Okay, quit. <laughs> <laughs> And that's okay. You ready for this project, Robert? Yes. <laughs> oh, you know me, I'm all about adventure and I've never done anything like this before. Are you gonna feel that way when we've got this thing half apart and it's strung all over the place? And, I was and I, nothing st and still nothing works yet. <laughs> I stuck to it on the generator and that was a lot to me. Yeah. You did, you did. So, Look at you. Man, oh man, what a job. What a job this thing is going to be. I'm still not convinced that it doesn't need to be scrapped, but we'll see. That's a good sign the engine will turn over, but we'll just have to see. The encouraging things about it is that everything is here. I mean, there aren't a bunch of pieces missing. It does not appear that it's had a whole lot of work done to it, which is a good sign. If it's never been apart before, you know, then that's possibly a good sign that it's never needed to be, you know, which is um, good. So I'm looking at the gaskets and things here where components meet and they're paper gaskets, not the metal gaskets like the old, uh, like, like the newer stuff. So, I mean, that that may suggest that the um, you know that's never been apart because the original paper gaskets may still be on it stuff like that the head gasket on it is is a paper gasket so that's good that's um, that that suggests that the head has never been apart so or the engine has never been apart. top end anyway we shall see uh, the nice thing about this tractor is that because it was the, an initial design, it doesn't have a whole lot of custom parts. So a lot of the parts, like the, the radiator was made by the manufacturer, who, a manufacturer who's still in business. The individual engine, you know, the engine and its individual parts were. The hydraulic system, same way, um, built by companies that are still around. And so you can still get parts for them. Cylinders are one of those things, if you need to rebuild, that uh, you can get uh, O-rings and you know stuff like that for so that's encouraging um, and uh, so anyway this is our project it'll be a winter and spring project and hopefully we'll have it running well enough to get up to contentment or it's going to the scrap heap we don't know which so but for what we got it for we can take it to the scrap yard and get all of our money back out of it so well I'm kind of impressed with the simplicity of the motor this you know of course i haven't really seen a lot of older engines and things like that i mean compared to any modern engines i've seen not on tractors but on trucks and cars there's just like two parts i'm kidding about that but there are not very many parts in there and i mean recognizable parts to me so <laughs> i at least know a little bit <laughs> <clears throat> yeah i'm excited though i'm excited really too excited. We'll see. I, I, I'm excited and I'm not excited, you know, because I know what this is going to do. I look at this machine, I think, oh my gosh, we've just bitten off so much. But, but uh, if we can, if we, it won't, if, if once we get everything hooked back up and going and we can get the transmission thing squared away, mm -hmm. it may not be mm -hmm. as big of a project as we think because well, uh, cosmetically we're not going to really do a lot to fix 
fix up the outside of it, I wouldn't think. Well, I mean, we got to get rid of the rust. Yes, but. But yeah, I mean, and there's a lot of rust, <clears throat> but hopefully we can find a quick and efficient way to take care of that. The, the now what people are probably asking Robert <laughs> is why don't they just hire somebody to do that? You know, to go out there and clear the land for them and stuff like that. <clears throat> well, I don't have an answer to you. But for what? Well, <laughs> I do. Do you not? <laughs> I do. Well, it's expensive. It's more expensive than this. Um, plus, this gives us the opportunity. Well, for me, it gives us the opportunity to do it ourselves, which is what we're wanting. We're mm -hmm. wanting to be self-sufficient and do as mm -hmm. much as we can by ourselves. And secondly, if this comes to fruition and we get it working and everything, the investment in this will be maybe less than what we would have to pay someone else to come and do the work. Mm -hmm. So, it, but it just depends. Like if, if we're able to get it working and use mm -hmm. it, um, probably over the long haul, this tractor and us doing the work would be less than contracting someone out to do it. Yeah, we put a pencil to this and <clears throat> we figured that um, if we can get this running for you know between its purchase cost and have it running for about three thousand dollars worth of investment and work uh then we're money ahead because we will easily spend easily uh six thousand dollars on earthwork that we need initially done out there at contentment to get the house built and then uh and the septic dug and the road cut and things like that and then also the advantage is, is that of course once we're established out there we have a piece of equipment that we can use for snow removal or anything else we want. Now, the value of this machine, if it's running, is somewhere between, you know, four and six thousand dollars, depending on its, you know, overall condition and how well it's taken care of and stuff like that. An old used backhoe like this, I don't know, between four and six thousand dollars. So, um, if it's going to cost us at least six thousand dollars to do all that work out there. Uh, to pay someone to do it then first of all we won't get to do it and number two um we won't have a machine afterward you know for snow removal and other things we may, we may want to do but if we do and even if we decide after everything's built out there that we want to sell this we can still sell it and uh we could take that money and go get something that we want for snow removal or you know something like that so <laughs> but it remains to be seen how much we'd have to throw into this um we'll just have to see we just have to see we'll we're going to find out as quickly as possible if this is going to cost us more than we think it's going to cost to get running and if it is obviously it's going to the scrap yard yeah, that's what i was about to say you know, i mean well if people see this they're going to be thinking we're crazy but yeah. i keep you know everyone thinks everything we're doing is crazy sure all of our family members and everyone and you know we had the guy deliver us we had the guy deliver this uh, tractor, this backhoe here to the property, and my mom comes out and she's like, oh my, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we are about to do a compression test on this engine, so um, I have to put this thing in the spark plug hole right there, and then we're going to start it, and then this thing is going to hopefully go up to 100 to 120 pounds. So what a compression does is it tests the compression in each cylinder of the engine. And if there is low compression in one cylinder or more, it could be that there, it could mean that there's a problem with the motor, but no, we're not thinking that. Is that good enough? <laughs> That's what great. Ah! Go ahead, Rob. Can I just put this on like this? Yep, screw it in there. Ooh, Very oh. gently, try not to knock any gunk oh, in there. I don't like that gunk on it. Well, I'm scared. I'm sorry. Ah. Here, if you want better control, hold on to that. Hold that right there. No, hold the gauge. Hold the gauge. We'll pull it off. Oh. To oh. give you you can stick that in there and get a little bit better control. Oh, I see. Okay, so this is the number one cylinder we're doing first. Oh, how do I turn it? Well, just turn it with your hand. It won't turn because that thing's in the way. The hose? Uh-huh. Well, let me show you. Hold this I, for a I second. Don't know how to do it. Get your, you hold the camera. I'll show you how to do the first one. You do the rest from here. So you want to hold this up here like this drop it straight into the spark plug hole and just begin twisting it and because this is a rubber hose it's flexible so it'll spin along with the and so it's spinning right now oh well, i thought it was 
I'm afraid of the dirt falling into them. No, some may. But that, it'll, clog, it'll, be, it'll clog it up. Well, uh, hopefully it'll be blowing out. But anyway. Oh, that's not hard. I don't know uh, what I was doing. Turning yeah, it Yeah, you just use the flexibility of the I was hose probably to help turning you. it the wrong way. <laughs> and then you stick this back on. Okay, I want to do it. Oh, you want to stick it on? No, oh, okay. I, want to, I want it to start and see. Okay, and then the first thing you want to do is clear you you clear the gauge in case there's any pressure in it you clear it like that uh -huh. okay then we're gonna we've made sure that the engine didn't have any gas in it we've also disconnected the um the distributor and the coil from the battery to make sure that the spark plugs do not get a spark so it doesn't accidentally turn the engine over in case there's any residual fuel in this in the system because we don't want it starting or trying to start what we're trying to do a compression test. We just want to test that pressure within the cylinder. So anyway, we clear the line of any pressure, clear oh. the line of any pressure, okay? And then we turn the engine over, oh, a given number of revolutions, okay? And we watch it build, we watch the pressure build, and then we'll clear it again, come back and do it again, so we can get a good, good solid test, make a note, uh, which cylinders, if any, are weak, <clears throat> and uh, take it from there. So, you ready? Okay, I'm gonna turn it over. It's not moving. It didn't move at all? No. Zero. What? It didn't move. Look at that gauge. 